Welcome. I would have preferred to deliver this in Orangeburg. Instead, we will use a little bit of technology to bring it to you. I am Gene Henriksen. Last year at Oktoberfest, I presented the Riley family of Orangeburg District in Denmark, South Carolina. The Rileys were my maternal grandmother's family. This year, I am presenting the Turners, who were my maternal grandfather's family. When I started this research, I had no real information. I asked my cousin Keith in Pineville, South Carolina, and he suggested asking Jack Turner. I spoke with my double second cousin, Moss, in Cameron, South Carolina, and he said Jack had all the Turner information. His grandmother, Annie Riley Turner, had made sure he learned his Riley history, but no one taught him about Turner's. I went to see my double second cousin, Jack, in Denmark, where he farms lands the Turners have had for generations, and he said he only knew back to our great, great grandfather, John Turner. He was told that John Turner had two brothers, one who went to Texas and one to Georgia, but he knew nothing more about them. Also, he said that he was told the Turner land came as the inheritance of John Turner's wife, Elizabeth Odom, whose father, Siebert Odom, was a surveyor. Unfortunately, there was not a great uncle who had been the family genealogist as had been with Riley's. Fortunately, I submitted a question to Orangeburg at groups.io and got an answer from Harriet Emery, who took an interest in my research and found a lot of information for me, eventually sending me a 22-page document on Turner relatives, including two who she grew up with in a small town in Mississippi. Then I had Jack Turner submit a DNA sample for Family Tree DNA for a Y-DNA analysis which gave us entry into the Turner Project. The administrator of the Turner Project, Leighton Turner, then supplied more information. The results of the Y-DNA test should confirm my research when it is completed. I hope to produce notebooks of the Rileys and the Turners for the Orangeburg County Historical Society and the Aiken Barnwell Genealogical Society. The first family members that we know about were in Virginia. There was a James Turner, whose birth is unknown, but he died in 1686 in New Kent County, Virginia. A John Turner, born around 1630 and died about 1705. And a William Turner, born about 1680 in Isle of Wight County, Virginia, and died about 1766 in Southampton County, Virginia. I've got the original name of Isle of Wight County there, and I won't try to pronounce it. It also included at that time the current Southampton County. It was one of the eight shires that were created in Virginia as settlers came in. New Kent County was named obviously for Kent uh, in England and Isle of Wight for the Isle of Wight on the south coast of England. The first step away from Virginia was to Bertie County, North Carolina. On the 11th of August in 1740, William Gray sold to William Turner of Isle of Wight, Virginia, 420 acres. And it says it's in the woods betwixt the Cashy and the Moratok. Well, the Cashy is now called the Cashy River and Moratok is the Roanoke River. Almost exactly seven years later, William Turner and his wife Patience sold to Matthew Turner 210 acres or half of the property uh, so that the two of them were living side by side. They owned adjacent property. They appeared on the same tax list. They had multiple in-laws in common. Their numerous children all married between the late 1750s and the early 1770s. So William and Matthew were evidently members of the same generation and the same family. 
The simplest explanation is that they were brothers, and this was later confirmed to me uh, by the Turner Project uh, and the Y-DNA Project. The map shows the travel of the two brothers from Isle of Wight down to Bertie County. Bertie County is outlined in red, and the arrowhead points to a little area called Lewiston Woodville. The uh, Roanoke River runs just to the north of that town, and the Cache is just to the south. The Cache is a short river completely contained within that county. The blue on the right side of the map is the Atlantic Ocean, and the shoreline is mostly contains uh, the outer banks of North Carolina. Up above that, you can see Norfolk and Virginia Beach and Newport News and Hampton, Virginia. Matthew and his wife had two sons and six daughters that lived to maturity. Joseph and John were the sons. The daughters were named Elizabeth, Patience, Martha, Mary, Ann, and Janet. Mary married George House, Jr. Their son was named Bayless and was one of the executors of Matthew Turner's will. Bayless is a rather unusual name and showed it up later uh, in the family when they moved, parts of them moved to Mississippi. So it shows a relationship in the family. William Turner also had a daughter named Janet who married Thomas House, the brother of Mary's husband, George House Jr. Several of the daughters moved to Johnston and Wake County. Wake County is where Raleigh, North Carolina is located. John moved to Sampson County, North Carolina. Some of the family remained in Bertie County. Joseph, the one we're most interested in, moved to Barnwell County, South Carolina. Joseph Turner was the son of Matthew Turner. He was born in Bertie County, North Carolina by 1744, since he was listed as a tithable with his father on the 1760 Bertie County tax list. A tax list of 1752 shows Matthew Turner with two other tithables, Benjamin Turner, identified as a white servant, and a slave named Isaac. The adjacent entry is for Edward Toole Sr. with Isaac Toole and David Toole, identified as white servants. Isaac and David Toole were sons of Edward Toole Sr. per the estate distribution, so Benjamin Turner was presumably the oldest son of Matthew Turner, although he was not survived by a son of that name and possibly did not live long enough to marry. Joseph Turner married a daughter of Edward Toole, and the Will of Edward Toole, signed 15 February 1772, did not mention legacies to his older children, but they were included in the overall state distribution. To Edward Toole, Joseph Turner, and Isaac Toole, each for their parts and shares of the estate, 12 pounds, 9 shillings, 2 pence, half penny. The name of the Toole daughter who married Joseph Turner is not stated, although it is believed to be Mary. Edward Toole was a neighbor of Matthew Turner. Mary's brother, Isaac Toole, moved to Barnwell County, South Carolina region shortly after Joseph Turner did. When Joseph Turner went to South Carolina, he went to the Orangeburg District and bought 340 acres on Spur Branch in 1785. In 1787, he bought an additional 655 acres on Spur Branch. And then in 1810, he bought 320 acres on Yarra Branch. And we see now the name has changed to Barnwell District. It was broken off of Orangeburg District around 1800. Then a David Edwards bought 1,000 acres on Spur Branch in 1804. And you will notice that the names in the record include David Edwards, but also Isaac Toole, Joseph Turner's brother-in-law, and Joseph Turner. In 1814, Benjamin Odom, 
who had been a captain in the Revolutionary War, purchased 673 acres on Spur Branch and had it surveyed by his son, Siebert Odom. Again, the people in the record are David Edwards, Isaac Toole, and Joseph Turner. This map of the lower portion of the South Fork of the Edisto River was produced by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. On the left side of the map, you'll see a red arrow pointing to Spur Branch. This is where Joseph Turner initially bought his land. It is just above Williston, South Carolina, and if you follow along the southern edge of the, or the bottom edge of the map, you go to Blackville and on to Denmark, South Carolina, where you see Highway 321, which runs north through Norway, Nices, and on to Columbia. There's also a smaller road, Route 70, which heads out and crosses the South Fork of the Edisto at Benneker's Bridge and then goes on leaving this map, uh, intersecting with US 301, which takes you into Orangeburg. This map is an enlargement of that area with Spur Branch on the right with a large red arrow and Yarra Branch on the left with a large red arrow. So it was in this general area that Joseph Turner and Isaac Toole and others bought land. Williston is down in the lower left-hand corner of this map. Joseph Turner had eight and possibly nine children. We don't know if he had some who did not survive childhood. He had a daughter named Sarah, born about 1763, that married John Parker. Thomas, who we'll concentrate on later, married a widow, Drusilla Shelley, who had three daughters and one son. Her husband, Abraham Shelley, had been killed in the Revolutionary War, and she was a couple of years older than Thomas. Matthew, born in 1770 approximately, married Mary Shelley, the daughter of Drusilla. So we talk about complex family relationships. Thomas had a stepdaughter named Mary and also a sister-in-law named Mary, and they were the same person. A daughter named Elizabeth married David Edwards, the son of the David Edwards that bought the thousand acres. Joseph Jr. married Sarah Shelley, again, a daughter of Drusilla. Nothing like complexity here. And a daughter named Mary, born about 1778, married David Edwards' brother, Victor Edwards, also a neighbor. Martha was born around 1780 and married a Samuel Wilson. And based on property records I have found, he apparently was living on Turner land uh, at the time of Joseph Turner's death. The son William, born about 1782, did not marry in Barnwell. He married after he had moved west. And then there was a daughter, we're not sure of the name, who apparently married a man named George Flora. The mystery of George Flora is we can find no records of him before or after the will, or actually the probating, of Joseph Turner's estate. With the exception of Thomas and Drusilla, none of the children of Joseph Turner remained in the local Barnwell area. All of them moved to Mississippi. Even Thomas's son, Littleton, his firstborn son, uh, moved to Mississippi with his uncle, Joseph Jr., and then later moved on to Apple Springs, Texas. This proved one point that my cousin Jack Turner had brought up, that one of John Turner's um, brothers had moved to Texas. Littleton married a woman whose name was Olive or Olive. In legal documents, it's spelled Olive. In non-legal documents, it's spelled Olive. Her last name was either Dunham or Dunham, and her father lived in Pike County. Mm -hmm.
Mississippi. After the Creek Indian Nation had been defeated, they were granted land bordering Georgia. And if you wanted to go to Mississippi, you needed to proceed through the Creek Nation of Indians, and you had to have a passport to do so. So here are three excerpts showing that in 1810, March 1810, Victor Edwards and his wife Mary Turner and eight children from Barnwell District, South Carolina, were given a passport. In November of 1810, Matthew Turner and his wife from Barnwell District got their passport. And in December 1810, David Edwards with his wife and ten children and Joseph Turner and Littleton Turner, the former with his wife and six children from Barnwell District, South Carolina, got their permits to pass through the Creek Indian Nation. So who was left in Barnwell County after everyone moved to Mississippi? John Turner, a son of Thomas Turner, whose brother was Littleton, was born 1 November 1793. John married Elizabeth Odom, the granddaughter of Benjamin Odom and the daughter of surveyor Siebert Odom, who had surveyed the land adjoining that of Joseph Turner and David Edwards. Michael Shelley was still there. He was a half-brother of John Turner and the son of Abraham and Drusilla Shelley. But Michael Shelley chose to move to Georgia and wound up in Houston County. Drusilla Shelley died about 1817. Her will left one shilling to each of her children who had moved away and the remainder to John Turner. The will is actually sort of comical. It says, to my beloved daughter Mary, I leave one shilling to the enjoyment of her and her family, and so on and so forth. And then at the end she says, and to my other beloved son John, I leave the remainder of my property. I was very fortunate to get a packet of information from the Carolinianna Library that included some letters dating back into the 1800s, and this is one of them. It's a letter from William G. Shelley, the son of Michael Shelley, to John Turner. You can pause your uh, viewing and read the whole thing. I just wanted to point out, he put, Sister Mary has got a dreadful by a horse, and that it will be a chance if she ever over it. This, by the way, this entire letter has no periods in it, so it's all one sentence. He also adds, I have got a engagement for the next year for $90, which shows you the combination of the decline of the value of the dollar and how cheap labor was at the time. I wish you would come out this fall. I think you would like this country a hundredths better than you do where you are, and I want Cousin Benjamin Michael to come out here for I think he can do a hundredths better than you he can there. And this was written the 28th of December in 1836. And notice on the right side how it was addressed to John Turner, South Carolina, Barnwell District, Blackville Post Office. On July the 4th, 1837, Littleton Turner wrote to his brother John Turner, from Scott County, Mississippi, says, This will inform you that myself and family are at present enjoying a moderate share of health and hope it may find you and yours in possession of the same blessing. You will notice in letters of that time that with death and disease so prevalent that people always included something about health in their letters. And he goes on, Times with us are at present pretty tight, provisions scarce and high, say corn $2 per bushel, and everything else in proportion. And he concludes, Uriah Harveston, who you know was a wild boy, is now a Baptist preacher. I have nothing more but remain affectionately yours, Littleton Turner. On the 10th of March, 1853, Jesse Gaines Cresselius wrote to John Turner, 
Jesse had married the daughter of Littleton Turner, whose name was Drusilla, and he was the preacher at the Antioch Primitive Baptist Church. He said, I will inform you that your brother moved to Texas in the fall of 1851 and settled in Trinity County. And on the 29th of October, 1852, he departed this life. This, therefore, is to inform you of the fact that Littleton Turner is no more. If you've ever wondered where Texas Tall Tales got their start, it was definitely prior to 1853. Asa writes, There is any quantity of game, the deer he say is so fat, they grease the bushes where they go. Myself and family are well, I trust this will find you all well. And then he gives an address for Olive Turner. Again, I was very fortunate that the Caroliniana Library had information from the John and Elizabeth Turner family Bible. It had the pages uh, that contain all the births and deaths. Initially, I thought there were only five children. There were five that grew to maturity and five who died very young. Eliza was approximately two years old. Um, Sabert died the same year. Georgiana lived to be about 19 before she died. Mary died the same year. And Daniel died when he was about 13. The remaining children, Drusilla, who married James Hutto, Martha, who married John B. Walker, who was a doctor, John Rufus, who married Elizabeth Emma Dowling, and George Washington Turner, George W., married Anna Melissa Jennings. He was my great-grandfather. Thomas J., and I've never seen it spelled out, but we believe it's Thomas Jefferson because he was a twin of George Washington Turner married an Isadora Beasley in Atlanta. I got a letter from the Medical University of South Carolina certifying that Thomas did graduate in 1857 as a physician. Drusilla Turner married James Hutto, who was sheriff of Denmark when Sherman's army arrived He was arrested as a possible member of the Confederate Army or a militia and sent to POW camp in New York, where he died several months later in April of 1865. Drusilla died the following December in 1866. Together they had no children. James had children by his first wife. Martha Ann Turner Martha married Dr. John B. Walker of Colleton County. He died young at the age of 34, and she moved back home with her four children to live with her parents. When her parents died, she kept the family Bible, and she passed it on to her daughter Arabella, who moved, who married a Roseboro from Edgefield. And she passed it on to her daughter Stella Roseboro, who married a Nelson, who passed it to her daughter, Arabella Nelson Edmonds, who was nice enough to put the family pages into the Caroliniana Library. The location of Dr. Walker's grave is unknown, while Martha is buried in the Denmark Cemetery. I have looked for Dr. Walker's grave. There is a book of graveyards in uh, Colleton County, but neither I nor the Historical Society of Colleton County can find it. Rufus and Elizabeth Turner's children. Joseph Allen Turner married Jane Eliza Roseboro and moved to Edgefield. John Rufus Jr. was sentenced to prison, and when he left prison, he moved to Florida to stay with his sister Emily. Apparently, John Rufus Jr. was an alcoholic, was living in a room that was provided for him by his aunt and uncle, and they had a daughter, and one day the father heard 
his daughter screaming, and he went out, and John Rufus was attacking her. And according to the newspaper article, the father beat him senseless. He then found out that some people had heard about it, and a mob was forming to come try to hang John Rufus Jr., and he talked him out of it. He called the sheriff in Bamberg, and the sheriff came over and picked up John Rufus and put him in jail. Then the sheriff heard there was a mob forming in Bamberg, so he called the state penitentiary, and they said, bring him up here. Emily, the daughter Emily Dowling Turner, married John Henry Babers and moved to Florida. Uh, Mr. Babers had previously been married to Laura Victoria Jennings, the youngest sister of George Washington Turner's wife. When they had three children, uh, Victoria died, and he came back to South Carolina and married Emily. And apparently the Baber family was in the fruit business and doing quite well in Florida. Sarah Elizabeth married Edward McQuaters and moved to Columbia. And Rebecca, who is pictured here, moved to Florida and married Ira Reeves in Florida. The picture I found on deadfred.com, not a particularly nice name, but I was searching for pictures of relatives, and this picture said Rebecca Turner from Graham's, South Carolina. And if you're not familiar with the term Graham's, there was a farmer named, landowner named Zachariah Graham, who sold land to the railroad when it came through to build a turnout. And the name of the area was originally called Graham's Turnout and then shortened to Graham's. And then later when they put through another railroad track that crossed it, they named it after the president of the railroad and called it Denmark. George Washington Turner and Anna Melissa Turner were married prior to the Civil War. George Washington Turner served in the 5th South Carolina Cavalry, and my double second cousin Jack has a set of orders allowing George Washington Turner to return to Barnwell to get a horse suitable for cavalry use. Their children included John Jennings, who died within about a year and a half, Jenny Washington, who married and was about 23. She died within a year of uh, the marriage. John Daniel Turner, known as John Dan, took over as head of household at the age of 17 when George Washington Turner died. He ran the farm and the sawmill, and if you've ever been to the Denmark Country Club, he milled the lumber for the pavilion from the logs they cut off the property. Aunt Rosabel, no, never married. Aunt Pauline married Francis Hallman and had no children. Thomas Henry married Flora Haley and had three daughters. George Cuthbert married Annie Elizabeth Riley and had a daughter and a son. That son had three daughters and a son, and that son is Jack Turner. Aunt Dora never married. And my grandfather, Frederick Jennings, married Martha Darley Riley and had two sons and a daughter, but those sons never had sons of their own. You notice that two, two Turner brothers, George and Frederick, married two Riley sisters, and that is why Jack Turner is my double second cousin. George Washington Turner died about seven months before my grandfather was born. And if you wonder why the Denmark Cemetery has the Turners laid out front and center, it's because George Washington Turner was asked to lay out the cemetery. The last letter was from John D. Turner, the son of Littleton Turner, in 1853, writing to George Washington and Thomas Jefferson Turner. He starts off, Dear Cousin, this will inform you that your kind and welcome letter came to hand August the 7th, bearing date July the 11th, 1853. 
And I will say to you, it found us all well, and I hope that these few badly written lines may reach you and find you all well as it leaves us. Then further on, it says, But I think if you will come and buy you a stock of cattle, that you can do much better with them than you can do in the timber business. On the second page, he starts off, I will say to you that I have been at some parties this year myself, as you stated you had been at a great many. I will tell you that I have been at some myself, and you better believe that I laid my ears back and walked in like a good fella. So that was from basically cousins to each other about trying to move everybody out to Texas instead of staying in South Carolina. Fred and Martha Turner were my grandparents. Uh, These appear to be their pre-wedding photos. And the house in the center top is the home they built in the 1930s. As I recall, this is a Sears kit house and it cost about $3,500 and it was hauled in boxes to the building site. Currently, there is an Episcopal church to the left of this and the house is owned by the Episcopal church. If you get a chance to go in it, there is a copy of the ad for that house model on the wall in the house. The picture in the bottom center is my mother at a very young age sitting in the driver's seat or standing in the driver's seat of her father's 1915 Model T Ford runabout. John Daniel Turner, who was killed when a horse kicked him in the stomach or chest in 1927, is pictured on the left. He built the house in the center with lumber from his own mill, and from what I understand, he had no plans. He just had an idea of what it wanted to look like. On the right-hand side is a picture of me with Jack Turner. Jack's on the left. He lives in the house that his uncle John Dan built. As a matter of fact, Jack's full name is John Daniel Turner, so it's appropriate for him to live in that house. We had just finished talking about the Turner history when this picture was taken by my wife. We have seen how the Turner family started in Isle of Wight, Virginia, moved to North Carolina, then to Barnwell County. Six generations after Joseph Turner arrived in Barnwell County, Catherine Turner married Harold Henriksen and lived in Charleston, where I was born. Then they moved to North Carolina and settled in Wilmington, where I was raised. I graduated from NC State in 1964 at the right time to be drafted for Vietnam. The choice was simple in 1964. Get married to avoid the draft, get drafted, or join the military branch of my choice. I joined the Air Force and became a pilot. Upon my return from Vietnam, I was stationed at Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. I married Susie from Newport News and remained in Newport News. Later, I accepted an offer to work as a programmer in Smithfield, Virginia, which is in Isle of Wight, thereby completing a three-century circle returning to the early land of the Turners. Thank you for your attention.